Folks, if you pay attention on my channel, I think you've heard me say oh, a lot that we are in a broken housing market. I think because it is a broken housing market, there are lots of myths out there. The one and only Beth Traverso has given this some thought, and she has come up with five of them. So let's find out what the five myths about the current broken housing market is. Beth, thank you for taking a shot at this. Hey, Mike. Yeah, thank you. So I've been hearing a lot of things flying around that, you know, there's 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 some truth to it. And you're right. The housing market, it is broken. You heard it here for here first, folks. Oh. Um, <laughs> and there's no denying that. Right. So I mm -hmm. think we all accept that. Um, but there are some things that I'm hearing that are not necessarily 100 percent factual. So I'm calling a miss. And so I wanted to just okay. chat about some of those myths out there. And the first one is that nobody's selling their home with their, nobody's giving up their 3% interest rate to buy a house with a 7% interest rate. Mm. And that is, there is some truth to that because there are people that are not doing it, but there's still a lot of people that are. So I'm seeing it every day. I work with these folks. The people that are moving now are the people that have a compelling reason to move that's yeah. stronger than their tie to the interest rate. That tie to the interest rate, the bond is strong, but it's only so yeah. strong. Yeah, they're they're go they're, go they're golden handcuffs. They're golden handcuffs, no doubt, but they're not unbreakable. No. And what I'm seeing more than anything is people that are moving out of state for jobs mm -hmm. or they're retiring out of state. So they and yeah. and they they're they're getting rid of that 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 they're willing to pay the extra amount maybe they're moving to a different cost of living in another area or who knows what but there are reasons yeah. there are reasons out there that they're doing it and so their people are out there selling so if you think that nobody's going to give up you can't just assume that somebody is not going to give up their three percent rate find no, out I, yeah i couldn't i couldn't agree more i mean that's the you know Life events happen, and I, I think I'm on record saying is I think for most people it's going to be multiple life events, you know, yeah. that will make that a kind of a no, honey, it's not a choice anymore. We've got to move, and it's out of state job, it's retirement, it's downsizing. You know, there there are some people that will be selling a three percent mortgage and paying cash for the next place. Yeah. You know, so uh, you're Lots absolutely cash right. Buyers out there, yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. I think I think saying no one would do it is is absolutely a myth, and and you're right. right. I. I hear that a lot. No one. It's 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 very and we have to be no careful one. out there because we put out things that are like self limiting beliefs. Like it's an excuse yes. for us to not do something because it's nobody's doing that. So I'm not going to try to do it because it's just not happening out there. Um, totally I'm not going to ask that seller if they want to sell because they have a low interest rate. Why they're not and people with low interest rates aren't selling. Don't tell yourself that you yeah. don't know the situation. Learn more. So more more. absolutely uh, love that. Number and, one, what do you got for two? Yeah. So no one's buying at 7% interest. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. People are buying and I say by and large, they're not necessarily the same buyers that were purchasing a, when rates were three, it's a different batch. A lot of those people probably already bought or made other plans. The people that are buying now it's old news. Like, I, like you were saying recently that people, their memory is short the mm -hmm. consumers out there, the memory is short and they are, they've adjusted for the most part. The buyers that are out there looking now fully accept the rates. I haven't had, if they're out there looking, it's because they can afford they're this ready. rate and they're okay with yeah. it. They're factoring it. It's all about payment. Like you're saying, they're looking at payment. Does it work for them? Yeah. So yeah. are I there fewer? I've... Yes, there's fewer. Of course. Uh, it, that's the thing I think that shocks people is there's still people buying at seven, seven and a half. And there's this thing in, in economics called trade down or switching. And in Vegas, uh, I don't know your market, but in Vegas, people are shocked that condos and townhouses just set a record high, all time record high, while single family homes are down like five grand or something. Now, how can that be? Well, guess what? They're trading down. They're buying a 250, a 260, a 300K townhome instead of a 500k house that's a lot less debt at seven and a half or eight percent so the payment is affordable so you're absolutely right i mean if you're a real estate agent telling yourself that nobody's buying you're hurting yourself yeah right understand that what where people are buying because it's still happening you're we're still going to do four million transactions yes and even during the depths of the real estate crash of eight nine ten like it never went to zero people were always yeah dude buying. 1981 the worst market ever for affordability yeah. we still did 2.1 million homes mm -hmm. yeah 
And to think that you can't get your share of that, I think is a self-talk that maybe should be reconsidered. Okay. You know, reconsider that. Reframe your self-talk. You know, there's millions of people that are going to sell their house. Millions of people are going to buy a house this year. Absolutely. You can do what you need. You, all you need is your part yeah. as, okay. a, as a home buyer. All right. I like um, those first two. What do you got for yeah. three? Yeah. Um, the third one kind of ties into that. Like no one can afford to buy a house right now. No one can afford 7%. And the answer is, I'm not going to lie. It's hard out there for a lot of people. Affordability is a big challenge. Like you said, you know, horrible. looking at the gap, that chart going way back hasn't been this bad since what was it? 81, 81 or something like 81. that. So yep. um, is it tough? Yes. But the answer is there's enough people out there that can afford it and they're still buying. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, because I see it around here and people have been complaining about that since it seems like time immemorial in the Seattle market, probably in the Bay Area too, where you are, but that, you know, it's unaffordable. Mm -hmm. The people that can afford it are buying what little is available. And we are all, we've always been in a low inventory market. And so yeah. the fact is that enough people can't afford it and are buying. And then we've got a lot of cash buyers out there too. Yeah. There's still a lot of cash on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's pretty. And I'm not saying I'm happy that it's, you know, you know, it, it's a complicated thing. I wish it was better for better for people with uh, more moderate incomes or first time yeah. buyers to it's be able to tough. break first into this market. I, my heart yeah. breaks for I, I feel it. I do. But the truth of the matter is there's people out there buying at this interest mm -hmm. rate and not seeing that they don't seem too daunted by it. We're, we're seeing the return of a lot of multiple offers in a lot of areas around here. So. Cool. Okay. Um, there are no good deals right now. Oh, I love that. <laughs> this I actually believe it's worse than that. I think over the next year it will be easier to get a good or great deal than the yeah. last twelve months. That is, you're absolutely right. People you hear that, that think that I'm like constantly. Oh, what are you doing? Why? Why is? Oh, it's crazy. Is it a little harder or a little different? Yeah, different. Yes. but you know, I would argue that it's always it's always hard. hard. It's always difficult. The, the the cause of the challenge varies, but it's always challenging. The nature of the challenge shifts, but that's why we're smarter, better, more educated, more, more ready, better support, yep. better mentorship, whatever it is you need, you know, and, and we're, you know, you learn what to do with the doing the, the daily discipline and getting the information and finding the right ways because it, it requires a little more creativity sometimes or looking between the lines, mm -hmm. find the deals that maybe others don't see the opportunity, but, um, but it can be done. And we see it because you're giving out those, those uh, tickets and those postcards yeah. every day. Right. So yep. Yep. people are doing it. Absolutely. Is it easy? Very of cool. course not. It never is. You should be happy that it's not easy because the easier yeah. it is, the more fools try to compete oh. with you. This is what differentiates the the best from the rest, if you will. So Amen to that. be happy that it, that it's hard. So, Agreed. but they are, there are good deals out there. It can be done. We still Dude, see. There are even great deals out there. There are right? great, great deals. Great yeah. deals are made. Mm -hmm. right? You've got to make them. Like, look at the building you're sitting in. People can go back and watch video number one. You took yeah. an eyesore with a dead rat in, that you could see from the window and turned it into 800 grand in profit in three years. Yeah. I literally, everyone suck. told me I was crazy. Everyone did. Even my circle, which is pretty open. <laughs> <laughs> what are Everybody you told me I was crazy. Like, no, I see it. We're doing this. So yeah. <laughs> And now, yeah, we're just, yeah. So anyway, watch video one if you guys are curious about that. Yeah. But and now your circle is saying, I believed yeah. in you the whole time. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Can I get a part of that? Well, you know, okay. you can do your own version of it. Yeah. So. Right down the street, there's another empty Exactly. Yeah. This one's mine, but there's others. Find others. Um, uh, as the fifth one I have, fifth myth for today is as interest rates go up, prices must go down. <laughs> now... This is when I heard more, like when the interest rates started going up yeah. last, when was that like middle of last year yeah. was when I started hearing that. Sure. And I have to admit, Mike, this was one that I myself believed was true for a while because I had not experienced this kind of rapid rise. And I've yeah. been doing this for 25 years, but I had not experienced this before. 
Yeah, congrats. It's okay because it hasn't been seen since eighty one. So you're okay. right. Okay, so <laughs> I have not experienced that. I did experience a little bit of a bump in rates in twenty nineteen when things went up to five, yeah. and rate and prices did go down for a little while, about ten percent. Mm-hmm. And so I, that made me think it kind of reinforced my belief in this myth. Sure. And then you have people out there, some, certain gurus on YouTube channels saying that, oh, okay, rates have to go down, but, or sorry, rates go up, prices go down. It's like an yeah. inverse relationship. Yeah. Well, rates go up 1%, prices must fall 10%. Yeah, that's exactly what I heard. And I was like, well, it makes sense mathematically. However, yeah. that's not looking at the whole picture. So I'm like, you've been talking about for this entire time is that it doesn't take into equation the supply destruction, exactly. yep. which I, that did not occur to me until I started paying more attention to you and saw it happening in real life that it is indeed true. And so um, one of the things we didn't get a chance to dive super deep into the nitty gritty numbers today, but what I saw in my area, my buy box on the east side is we're actually up 9.4% year over year. What? Yeah. Nailed it. So, so the the proof the proof is in the in the math there, right? So yeah. it can't. Yeah, the, the only thing that higher rate. Point. Yeah, the only thing that higher rates have ever guaranteed is less transactions. Yeah, and we've had a crash in transactions when we went to six percent. We are going to go lower at seven percent. It has no bearing on price. None. None. If you have no supply. It doesn't matter. And Correct. I have. Yeah, if the supply is not there, then the prices will stay up because there's enough. Like we talked about the other other myths, there's, there's enough, enough buyers fire. out there that are propping that price up. And yeah, then, it, I, then as rates start to come down again, well, that's certainly not going to make prices go down. No, you have this pressure building mm-hmm. of the marginal buyer because right now the marginal buyer thinks six percent is good, so they're waiting and waiting. Yeah. And yeah. The longer we stay above seven, the bigger that pressure will be, and it will just be unleashed when we go sub seven. Absolutely. And I, I, um, I'm so glad I was right. <laughs> yeah. Again, it, you you know, earned I, your t-shirt I, on that that's one. That's right. I, yeah. earned it. <laughs> I guess the last question, I'll just point out this. If you told me we had to do 6 million transactions, then you're absolutely right. Higher rates mean lower affordability means the only way you get to that transactions is lower price. It's simple, yeah. but that's not how the system works. Transactions are guaranteed to no one. That's why we're going to do 4 million versus 6.2 and prices are going to be stable, especially below the median. Yes. You're going to get some deals on luxury property, vacant office buildings with rats inside, but you know, it's yeah. sorry guys. Um, uh, no price crash here. Yeah. So I'm um, sorry if I'm bursting anybody's bubble there, but <laughs> I got to tell it like it is. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's other myths too. We could have fun with that maybe next time, but uh, and I'm sure you've got your own, but um, yeah. those are the first five that came to me that I've been hearing a lot on repetition there. I felt like it was time to have a conversation about yeah, it. I think there's a lot of fake gurus and charlatans that are, uh, they found a, a record and they just put it on repeat. Yeah. And uh, because they don't they don't actually have any skill. They have no experience. They haven't bought anything. They're not doing anything except producing garbage. But it's high paid garbage. So if you can live with yourself and produce garbage, then by all means, go for it. Yeah, they're but that's what their business model is. You know, for me, one of my uh, if if somebody's not doing if somebody's not in the game, I'm not listening to their advice. If somebody's going to give you advice on something that they're not doing or they've done poorly, I'm not going to take I'm out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, folks, if you want to talk to a 1% agent and better yet, get a referral to her personal network, how would they reach out to you? Yeah, I can be reached at bethtraversogroup.com or you can find me in the Facebook group or just Google me and find me on online. I'm everywhere. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And congrats on the building again. Thank you very much.